Sidel Pulaski did not seem to fit in. Sidel Pulaski clasped the translated notes to her bosom. My little secret mustn't peek, she said coyly, but the doctors had come to see Angela. The plastic surgeon loosed the tape from her cheek and peered under the gauze. One graft should do it, but we can't operate until the tissue heals, he said to the intern, then spoke to the patient. Call my secretary for an appointment in two months. He strode out of the room, leaving Denton Deer to replace the bandage. I don't want plastic surgery, Angela mumbled. It still hurt to talk. Nothing to be frightened of. He's the best when it comes to facial repairs. That's why I brought him in. We'll have to postpone the wedding. We can have a small informal wedding. Mother wouldn't like that. How about you, Angela? What do you want? He knew her unspoken answer was, I don't know. The door flew open and slammed against the adjacent wall. Where do you think you're going? Denton pulled Turtle to a halt by one of the streaming ribbons twisted in her braid. The sign says no visitors. I'm not a visitor, I'm a sister. And get your germy hands off my hair. Denton Deer hurried to seek first aid for his bleeding shin and sent the biggest male nurse on the floor to take care of Turtle, the same male nurse who chased Otis Amber out of the hospital for sneaking up on a nurse's aide carrying a specimen tray and shouting, boom! Turtle had time for one question. Angela, what did you sign in the receipt this time after position? Person? I changed mine to victim, Sadell said. Turtle paid no attention to the victim. She was more interested in the two men entering the room, the burly male nurse and that creep of a lawyer, Plum. I gotta go. Don't say anything to anybody about anything, Angela, no matter what happens, not even to a lawyer. You know nothing, you hear nothing. She skirted Ed Plum, ducked under the outstretched hairy hands of the male nurse, slid down the hall, scampered down the stairs, and out of the hospital. Hi, how are you? Ed Plum smiled at Angela, ignoring the patient in the other bed. He didn't recognize Miss Pulaski without her painted crutch. I'm sorry to hear about your accident. Otis Amber told me about it. Just thought I'd drop in for a chat. The young lawyer, who had admired the pretty heiress from the minute he first laid eyes on her, did not have a chance to chat. Grace Wexler entered the room, saw the answer to the clues. Ed Purplefruit, the murderer, standing over her daughter, and uttered a blood-curdling shriek. Three visitors in one day. The first was Otis Amber with a letter and another receipt to sign. Chris had pretended to be scared by the boom, but he wasn't really. He twitched because he was excited about going to the Westinghouse again, even if he hadn't figured out the clues. Then Flora Baumbach came to see him. He wasn't nervous at all with that nice lady. She smiles that funny smile because she's sad inside. She once had a daughter named Rosalie. She told him how Rosalie would sit in the shop and say hello to the customers and how she would feel the fabrics. Mrs. Bombeck made wedding dresses, which are mostly white, so she bought samples of materials with bright colors and patterns because Rosalie loved colors best. Rosalie had 573 different swatches in her collection before she died. Mrs. Bombeck said her daughter might have been an artist if things had turned out differently. What would I have been if things had turned out differently? The third visitor entered, limping. His partner was limping. Too much excitement. His stupid body was jerking all over the place. Denton Deer sat down to the wheelchair. Take it easy, Chris. Calm down, kid. I'm not the creature from the Black Lagoon, you know. His partner, a doctor, watched horror movies on television, too. Slowly, arms untangled, legs unsnarled. Slowly, Chris stuttered out his news. Flora Baumbach felt so guilty about seeing their dropped clue that she told him one of her clues, mountain. But we mustn't tell Turtle. Don't worry, the intern said, displaying a bruised shin. Chris laughed, then stopped. I'm sorry. Mountain. Hmm. Denton Deer thought about the new clue. If a treasure is hidden in a grain shed on a mountain plain, I sure don't have time to look for it. Do you? No. Let's forget the clues. I have something more important to tell you. Don't get excited, okay? Chris nodded. His partner was going to ask for the money. Denton Deer stood. I'll get your toothbrush and pajamas. Then we'll go to the hospital. Don't get excited. Chris got excited. How could he explain that what he wanted from his partner was companionship, not more probing, pricking doctors with their bad news that made his mother cry? Listen, Chris, can you hear me? 
just overnight. I found a neurologist, a nerve doctor, who works on problems like yours. Operation? No operation. Did you hear me, Chris? No operation. The doctor thinks a new medicine may help, but he has to examine you, make some tests. I have your parents' permission, but no one will touch you unless we talk it over first. You and me, together. I promise. Chris grimaced, trying to smile. His partner said, talk it over. The two of them, together. They were really partners now. You can have money. What? Oh, the money. Later. Here, let me take those. You won't need them in the hospital. Chris clung to his binoculars. Well, I guess you do need them. Ready? Here we go. All of a sudden, he was leaving Sunset Towers, pushed by his limping partner. Maybe Dr. Deere is not who and what he says he is. Maybe he is being kidnapped for ransom. Maybe he's being held hostage. Oh boy, he hasn't had so much fun in years.